botulinum toxin um, irreversibly blocks the release of the neurochemical that makes the muscle tighten, if you will, or the, and so the nerve itself does not release a chemical called acetylcholine. And this acetylcholine blockade, which is irreversible, um, is what allows the muscle then to be more relaxed. Uh, it eventually regrows the ability to do it and reverses it, but during that period of time, there's a balance that occurs. The muscles that are too tight are relaxed. The muscles that are too loose are somewhat tightened again for a normal balance of the muscle tightness and, and mobility. And so with that then, there hopefully is increase in the overall skills of the patient, the mobility to walk, in that case, or just comfort and care. The study that I presented about was really just one aspect of a larger, story, larger study. This particular study that I talked about was actually the largest one in cerebral palsy to discuss the use of two measurements in these children who have the increased tone in their lower extremities called the TARDU and the modified Ashworth score. It was one aspect of looking at these patients because this was what we call a phase three study. In other words, we did a study in which the, the medicine was known to be safe, although we were checking it, and we did a very controlled study on 241 children in a multinational way. And with those, they were divided into three groups. One group was placebo group. They were injected but did not receive the active medication. One was what was at 10 units and one was at 15 units, so a moder moderate dose and a high dose group. And then each of those groups, as it turned out, worked out to be kind of equal in numbers, and then those results were interpreted. And the way you interpret studies like this after you maintain the methods and you maintain the training, and one of the other things about the study is that the people who did the injecting and the people who did the measurements were trained and retrained and retrained so that there would be consistency although there were multiple individuals involved over multiple countries, because that's often a flaw in many studies. But with that, then they were able to define these three groups, and the primary endpoint was something called a modified Ashworth score. This is a test of tone, and doesn't specifically say spasticity, which as an individual or a clinician that deals with, with this, we often separate this and so we can better understand the mechanisms of what's going on. But with that said, the primary was the modified Ashworth scale. The way one does it is just to, to move the joint and to see how tight it is. If it's not tight at all, it's zero. If it's essentially rigid in this particular scale, it was a four. And so we had defined parameters that would allow the patient to come to the study. And they were around a two, which meant there was some resistance throughout. Then that could be measured again after the injections with the person measuring not knowing whether they had received medicine or not and whether it was low or high dose. And the study showed that indeed, that statistically significantly, these people had a change with the medication doses and with the medication allowing them to have freer movement of their muscles. The other score that we did looked specifically at the spasticity and the difference about spasticity is that we describe it as being velocity dependent. So you would do a very long passive kind of movement and then a fast one. And often there would be a catch and then a release. And that angle between the two becomes very important because that's really measuring not just increased tone for any reason, but increased tone because of spasticity specifically. And that was a tertiary goal in the study. The secondary goals were important too, although not reported here. And those are functional goals, uh, things like patients' goals for themselves, balance, walking. So this particular study didn't just look at what we call a technical measure, which is just something you can get a ruler out and measure, but instead it made a difference in the actual function of the patients, which is also incredibly important and probably the primary goal of all of us as clinicians. So the study showed that statistically significant changes were seen with the injections and not in the placebo as much. And so therefore the interpretation was that it was a positive study. And this particular abstract pointed out that it's a comparison study, or that wasn't the goal of the study, but it was a comparison we did between the two 
and there was a very high correlation between these two parameters that we were looking at, and it was in a large group with all the other um, methodology contained and controlled.